Uh, Yongnuo. Yongnuo. Yeah, what he said. The Yongnuo YN450 first got my attention through a random social media post where I went, Wow, what a brilliant idea. Instead of making our phones more camera-like, why don't we just make our cameras more phone-like? Because that is exactly what's going on here. By day, it's an Android device with a full touchscreen back. And by night, it's got a 16 megapixel micro four third sensor. Andy, I need your help with this. Yong No. 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 Yong No. Yong no. Obviously, because this product is not formally available outside of China, there's no need to have an English product page, so I actually can't read almost anything about the specs on the website here. So Andy, what can you tell us about this thing? I figured this out. 4K 30 FPS, 32 gigs storage. Yep. Three gigs of RAM, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and conveniently, it's actually a removable one. That is a mess ton of internal space taken up by the battery, which is a little confusing given that the product is only, I think, rated for four hours of continuous use. Got a quarter 20 threaded mount on the bottom, one of those handy dandy little, uh, I mean, you could put a wrist strap on it, but let's be realistic. You're more likely to hang like a little crystal or stuffy off of it these days. Micro SD and SIM card slots. Oh, I can't wait to put my SIM in this and see if it actually works. Micro USB charging, headphone jack. Can't take that for granted these days. You know what else is madness? My segues to our sponsors like Honey. Honey is the free web browser extension that will find you the best promo codes on shopping websites like Amazon, eBay, and more. Get it today at joinhoney.com slash LTT. Why buy a camera phone when you can buy a phone camera? You know, right? I'm not even gonna be able to like operate this device because it's probably only gonna be in Chinese. It, does Is this it? say eight core? Eight core, yeah. Okay. And that, two point, like 2.0 gigahertz. Yeah, yeah, I can read that part. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. in English. <laughs> <laughs> Curiously, even though the only pricing we can find for the camera itself is from news articles and pegs it at around 300 US dollars, it seems like Yong Nuo. Yong Nuo. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, it seems like they only sell it as part of a bundle that seems targeted squarely at influencers. So it's a lighting and camera microphone. Lighting, camera, and microphone bundle, and a lens. Yeah. So what makes you think they're targeting TikTokers with because this thing? Because on their product page it says, this is the best thing for vlog. What are the odds we can select English in the menu here? Let's see, let's see. And only Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they give option? The home screen is clearly designed to be more like a camera. So your media is front and center. We've got our camera app, rip off Safari icon that is presumably a browser of some sort, video app, uh, mail, and then some other sort of random tools. You got your calculator. Uh, that looks like a gallery application, contacts, uh, voice recording, and then over here, Right there on your home screen, you've got a little widget that tells you how many pictures and videos you've recorded and how much of your storage is still free. So let's put the lens on. One of the major criticisms of the first revision of this product, the YN450, was that it used a Canon EF mount on a micro four thirds lens, which led to some compatibility problems. So this is the YN450M, which has a micro four thirds mount. And then Yong Nu. Yong Nu. Uh, includes their own lens. This is a 42 and a half millimeter uh, f1.7 lens and uh, presumably it'll just kind of pop right on there. Hey, 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 look at that. Hey, look at this guy. First picture. Wait, is that a camera? Couple things I'm noticing immediately. One is the software, not great. I'm here in the camera app and the home button just, it, it doesn't work. Maybe if, oh yeah, you, so you can actually press the back button specifically in the camera app. Also, in terms of ergonomics, it felt all right holding it as a phone before. With the lens on it, the story changes a little bit. Now, I realize there's no real way around that. There's a lot of you know glass in a lens. It's 
fine, I get it. Uh, but it is definitely something to consider. So it wants a SIM card. So I guess this is where I put my SIM in the, in the phone, camera, whatever it is. Can I place a call with it? Does it even have like a microphone and speaker? I'm trying to call Andy, hello. Oh, it's not doing it, but I can text. Okay, I, I text you. Yeah, my data works and my SMS is working, but calls are not coming through for whatever reason. You know what? That's fine. This is more about the camera anyway. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be setting Brandon off to the races to take some pictures with this puppy, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and what did we decide on for our last one, Brandon? XT2. A Fuji oh, yeah. XT2. XT4. XT4. That's really weird. The like Android buttons are very unresponsive when you're in the camera app. In here, we can manually change settings like the ISO, uh, shutter speed, uh, depending on which mode you're in. So here we'll switch to full manual. You can change the aperture. Very, very nice. I am really excited. So am I. How was it? So I've used this thing for a total of about five hours now. That's what happens when I ask him to do something for two hours and it involves a camera. Hey, you asked me to cover photos and video. That's in th with three devices. That's right. not a small task. All right, and how was it? Um, it was a very interesting experience. So right off the bat, the touch screen is awful. It's not very good. Like, I could not change the setting that I was in half the time if I wanted to use aperture priority or manual. Um, and then the biggest thing with video specifically is right off the bat, you can't, I could not figure out for the life of me how to change the mode. So you're stuck with aperture priority and video. you can't change any other settings. You can change your aperture, that's it. Luckily, I combated being able to use the lens in a way that is useful outside by using an ND filter. Then the photos themselves, I couldn't tell sometimes if something was gonna be exposed properly because it would show exposed properly on the display. Yeah but then when it would take the photo, I'd get a photo that was like three stops under or something, just like so dark, like ridiculously dark. So whatever it's doing, it's previewing, allowing you to see it as if to tell you that your image is fine, but then it's not. But because you're capturing raw, maybe that's something they're doing on purpose, maybe. knowing yeah. that it does a better job of capturing details in darker yeah. parts of the scene. Even switching to the raw DNG setting when you don't speak, like when you can't read Chinese, because I can't read Chinese, unfortunately. I, I, I couldn't do it. I had to have Andy do it. It was, the, and that part was just rough. But you can record something with a much better lens than what you would find on a normal phone. True. And upload it straight to Instagram. True. Straight to TikTok. Yes. Cellular data. Yes. And some of your criticisms were of the lens specifically as well. Yes, the lens is also very mediocre. Right. But again, you could make that better and then it. have a better time. And if you're very careful, if, like, if you want to use it for normal use, if you're very careful with the way that you're looking at the image, exposing the image, yeah. you will actually, you could get good results. Huh. It is possible. Well, let's have a look. Now, to be clear, yes. I pushed this photo a stop just with all the photos, because they were shooting in DNG, I just needed to push them to be exposed to how you would normally sure. expose them. But as long and as the information's there, then there's nothing wrong with no, that. No, absolutely. It just means that extra yeah. work is involved before you could actually upload So it. just without even looking at anything else as a reference, you can tell that the highlight roll off is not amazing. Yep. Um, colors. They managed to keep it not pink. Yeah. Um, that's tough. That's yep. hard to do. This is a backlit situation. So like yep. the sun is like right over here. Wait, I see what you mean. This doesn't even look like it's taken in the same place. Yeah. I mean, there was wind, so and they weren't taken at the exact same time, but this is the exact same spot. The tripod was in the same place. And you can just, you can see the iPhone is doing a way better job of the sky. Like, it, like you almost don't even feel like this is a backlit situation. Yeah. So like this is a 26 megapixel camera. It's also a fairly recent camera. So like... Detail is great, bokeh is great. It's a 56 mil f2 or uh, f1.2 lens, so like. So really the only justification for the YN450 is if it was more user friendly to be able to use a manual yeah. lens. Maybe not this lens, but if you had a different lens, yeah. how do you feel about the experience versus the iPhone? It's still a much worse experience, like it's slower to take the photo. I, had, I, I, sure. I also found myself taking more photos with it because I was not confident that I got it on the first try. This, so this was another challenging situation where it was like, 
backlit and the sun is like above this building, but you can just see the sky's really bright. And I also exposed for the sky Yeah, in this. we clearly completely lost the and detail under the building here. There's a little bit left, and not like, much. It looks really crushed as well, like yeah. right here. Like it's almost, um, it's almost like, it can't tell if it's red or black. Like yeah. it's not, not it, it, captured There's well. artifacting and like noise that yeah. is not pleasing. The sharpness though is not bad. Yeah. Like overall, it's again, 16 me megapixel sensor, this lens at like, I think it was, this was an F4. It's serviceable. Yeah. Um, again though, you really feel the lack of dynamic range. This is not a portrait mode photo. This is just a, like a standard photo with a telephoto lens. This also there. looks like a cartoon almost. Yeah. Well, it's the smart HDR, right? Like, Was the sky really that blue? No. Okay. Yeah. It, it like, yeah, <sighs> there's, Apple. it's something, it's something, that's a thing. Like, so this is the X-T4. This is the young new. Yeah, so how much does that camera cost though, in fairness? Uh, it is about, oh, I don't know the US, I think 16.99 US. Yeah. Okay, Yeah. so it's six times the price. Yes, it is. Almost. Yes, it uh, is. Five times the price. Yes, it is. And you can't upload straight to Instagram. Well, you can't, okay, no, you can't. Not directly from the camera. It, it is a pretty easy upload, but. But now let's see the iPhone. Because one of the justifications I could see for this device would be, okay, you know, maybe I'm spending a bunch of money on, you know, this thing that's really more focused on being a camera than it is on being a phone, but this way I can only own one device. Like I could see it as like a cost savings thing. Unless the phone experience was so bad that I was gonna have to own this in addition to my regular phone anyway. Which I think you in, do. In which case the argument becomes, well, why not just get a better phone with a better camera on it in the first place? That's where I think we're running into trouble. So I exposed this at no exposure compensation. And this is what the Yongnuo thought was an adequate exposure. Is there enough detail left in here? Can you bring it up in light? It gets Let me really see. rough. Like there's this like this purple fringing that I, again, exp I, I, I can show you some other ones. You can really see it right along here in Dennis's shirt. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, this was consistent with underexposed images. Like this is what seems yeah. to happen with it. And I've seen that shirt. It's not purple. No, definitely not. <laughs> well, and again, the iPhone did a good job. The cutout's pretty good. Yeah. It Like this would be. His shoulder got a little not, bit Yeah, and a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. But like most people be pretty happy with this, honestly. I hate what Apple does with the sky. So the this iPhone is the did a iPhone. great job of this one. Yep, this one's really good. It's a pretty subtle cutout. A yep. little mess up here, but otherwise. At four by six or again, five by seven, I would never would, notice it. Even even with the HDR, they didn't fully retain this part of his arm, and it's just gone in the audio. Yeah. Like you can just, there's nothing there. It's clipped completely. They're both clipped, but this is a little bit nicer overall. Yeah. Wise. I definitely think that the Terran's face looks more, like the lighting looks more natural on Terran's face. Mm -hmm. You can actually almost see some of the correction that Apple's done to flatten out. Yeah. The lighting on his face. Yeah, which I always hate about their processing. It gets he me. looks like he's wearing face makeup. And his skin isn't like that. Like yeah, his skin's not that uni looking. uniform. Yeah. Yeah, whereas here it has more texture to yeah. it. This mm -hmm. is kind of fun. It's not very often we get to look at such an unusual Piece device that neither of us has any idea what yeah. to expect from it. It's such a weird like thing to think about. So the other thing I noticed is that there's significant vignetting like on mm. a lot of these shots of the Yongno, you don't notice that. Yeah, it's that's almost like a mismatch between sensor size and lens, but it's not. These it, are this is Micro Four Thirds. Well, and and I also wonder if it's the type of thing that they could have corrected. If like there is, because the benefits of Android, they could have put that in software. This one baffled me a little bit because I was unsure of what was going on. Again, I exposed this at zero exposure compensation, but it just looks so much darker. Like I don't know if it was a processing thing or, and I even tried to take the photo at like a half stop ex exposure compensation, but then I just lost the sky. It's really dark. It was gone. It, it like, and look, you can see in this photo, the vignetting is intense. Yeah. Like it is so noticeable. It looks like a filter. Yeah. I, I don't know why, I couldn't explain why, because this was not the case on every photo I took with this thing. And I used the same lens the whole time. And there are other shots that were this wide, but it just didn't do, and this is the iPhone. You can really tell Apple's pumping the saturation on things like the orange uh, around that store. Um, red sign. The red, yeah, the red sign. And the sky's that blue again. The sky's that <laughs> bloody blue again. It's so much sharper than the Yongnuo though, even though we're on a, a, looking at it wider here, I can already tell 
And you know what, too? The other issue I was having, yeah. this is the best I got out of the focus when I tried to take this photo. I didn't notice it because I couldn't. Also, reviewing the photos is yeah. not like a really seamless thing. So it's not perfect here. And the shutter speed was high. So it's not a matter of like the camera wasn't stable enough. It yeah. just misses really easily. Well, that end, it's really hard to hold it stable. I noticed this when I was just taking shots Yeah, it's not, here. ergonomically, it's not the best shape. And there's no stabilization whatsoever, yeah, either in the camera or in the lens. So this is the X-T4. Yeah. On a, and it, the other thing I did with the X-T4 is I put it on a profile that is closest to the iPhone. So this is actually like more saturated. And I was like going to say, it looks... And contrasty than you would typically uh, have for my camera. Yeah. I would typically not shoot it in this profile, but I wanted them to be closer. And again, though, you still see it like, Ah, this looks so much better. Yeah. <laughs> like the orange actually looks like what I could see. At five times the price. Yes, fair enough. In fairness. At five times the price. Let's look at some video. Oh, okay. Yeah. If, if anyone's watched Space Force, there's they used the Kokomo song in that, in that first episode. And yeah. so Riley did a TikTok to that. I did it as oh. a vertical video, like a yeah, TikTok. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, there's nothing left in his pants. This is with an ND filter as well. So this is giving the lens the best shot to like get a nice bokeh depth yeah. of field look. To be, to be fair though, the bokeh does look relatively nice. Like this is not something that you could get from a phone. And the sky looks way more natural than what I'm gonna see from the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of the iPhone, let's take a look at that real quick. My expectations are that the video will look very fluid, but wow, that pops, doesn't it? Okay, so that's the iPhone. And okay. then just for reference. I didn't even know the X-T4 is really like a video. It's not really a video camera, though the video on the X-T4 ha has improved a lot since my X-T2. So okay. it actually is a reasonably good camera, especially for a mirrorless. Having be the ability to choose your exposure makes a huge difference. And I didn't like, I could color this to look that much better too. Wow, you can really see that purple. Yep, the fringing is pretty bad, but, but like the, lens. the depth is there. Like this yeah. is not, you can't do this with a phone. Honestly, this, would this be very a... usable. All right, iPhone. 100% is a phone. Yeah, there's, there's no, no depth, depth shot. here. Um, you can see the jelly. Little rolling just, shutter yeah, rolling issues. Rolling shutter is ugly. Um, yeah. This is what a camera looks like. For the cost of the other two for the, solutions. For the cost up. of the other two solutions combined. It's purple. So this is what happens when you don't have an ND filter. So as it tries to compensate yeah. for having too much light, Look at this. it turns purple. This looks like Twilight. Yeah. Not the movie. Well, it just, well, it's, so just, it's still it just better than Twilight. Looks bad. <laughs> 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 so then when I this is I forgot to put the ND filter, and then here's me putting it back on. Right. And you can see how much it's helping the image. Yeah. This is usable. That's very usable. Because this looks pretty good. Like overall. Yeah, I, I'd be okay with that. No one would notice if we put that in our video. No, absolutely not. That actually looks so much sharper, not necessarily because the lens is sharper, yeah. but because you're getting so much more detail in those those sharp contrasts between the light reflecting off the top of the leaves yeah. and the shadows underneath and them. And by default, there's so much more shadow detail here because there's it's so corrected more. already. Um, this actually is a really great showing yeah. for the, the video iPhone, camera on the iPhone. The it iPhone looks did a great job. Outstanding. And you're on a tripod, so you don't get as much of that jello effect. I'm gonna say, wow, this is um, the X-T4 getting blown out of the water by the iPhone. I was also using the Rec. 709 profile, so it, it's a, it is not retaining as much dynamic range right. as it could. So this is a case where the iPhone's inability to have you know foreground things out of focus and background things out of focus like you would on a real camera can actually be a strength for it because everything that we're looking at is within one plane in the image. So having this deep depth of field gives us all of this detail in this branch and we're not drawn to, our eye is not drawn to the fact that if there was something in the foreground that would also be in perfect focus and you know, so would a cloud in the sky because we can't really tell. I prefer the iPhone shot in this case. I prefer the iPhone shot, I yeah, think. So this was the best, the best case scenario for the iPhone, I think. And then it shows that again, when you're using a phone, and you want that wider, like wide shots on a phone, especially these days, they really do sell well. Just like our sponsor, <laughs> Squarespace. Do you think you don't need a website? Well, maybe you do. You can make anything you want with Squarespace. They have award-winning templates that'll help you make your website stand out instead of looking like it's from the 90s. And they've got tons of great features. If you're looking to open a business online selling products, they've even got you covered there. Squarespace can help you showcase what you're selling in a modern style. They've got inventory management built in and there's no limit to how many items you can sell. 
We use Squarespace for both LinuxMediaGroup.com and LTX Expo, and we built those websites really, really fast. And if you get stuck, you can contact their support team 24-7 via live chat and email. So don't wait. Head to squarespace.com slash LTT and get 10% off your first purchase today. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, uh, get subscribed because we're going to have uh, Brandon's working on a video coming soon where we're going to take every iPhone yes. ever, ever and compare the cameras across them. That's going to be a lot of fun. And if you're looking for something to watch right now, what's another? Uh, actually, yeah, we did a, 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 a recurrent gen camera shootout. Yeah. No, let's push people to the pro versus amateur challenge. Oh. Go watch it. It's great. It's so entertaining. It's, okay. it's so entertaining. It's entertaining. <laughs> it is entertaining. It's very entertaining. It is entertaining. <laughs> cool. He's still salty. Yeah. <laughs>